हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम क्लास ट्वेल्थ फिजिक्स चैप्टर इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन एंड दिस टॉपिक इज फेराडेज लॉज ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन द एंटायर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन इज बेस्ड ऑन दीज टू लॉज सो लेट स्टार्ट वट इज द फर्स्ट लॉ फर्स्ट लॉ से इज दैट वेन एवर द अमाउंट ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स लिंक्ड विद द कंडक्टर चेंजेस and emf is induced in the conductor which lasts as long as the flux is changing okay to understand this law let us first revise the meaning and formula of magnetic flux magnetic flux is represented by symbol phi b b is a subscript right so magnetic flux is represented by this symbol and the formula for magnetic flux is ba cos theta where b is the magnitude of magnetic field and a is the magnitude of area and theta is the angle between magnetic field and area vector so since b and a both are vector quantities and cos theta is also there so we can write this as b dot a right so like electric flux magnetic flux is simply the number of magnetic field lines passing through an area number of magnetic field lines passing through an area whose formula is ba cos theta right you all must be knowing what is area vector area vector if you don't know the area vector let us revise it first area vector is simply a vector perpendicular to a surface area and the magnitude of the vector is the magnitude of the area for example let us consider the area of this board so the area of this board is in this plane so if we take area vector for this the area vector is either in this direction that is out of the plane or into the plane because area vector is always perpendicular to the plane and the magnitude of this vector is equal to the area of this board right so that is area vector so this is the magnetic flux right this is simply the formula of magnetic flux so what the first law is saying first law says that whenever the amount of magnetic flux linked with a coil or conductor changes an emf is induced in the two ends of the conductor and hence a current is induced in it for example this is a magnetic field when we draw cross for magnetic field that means we are showing this magnetic field as it is going into the plane right so this is a magnetic field which is going into the plane now this law says whenever the amount of magnetic flux linked with the coil changes an emf is induced in the coil so magnetic flux depends on three factors magnetic flux depends on the value of magnetic field the magnitude of area and the angle between b and a so by changing any of these three we can change the magnetic flux linked with a coil and whenever the magnetic flux linked with a coil changes with time an emf is induced in the coil for example let us take a circular coil in this field and now let us suppose that there is some gap in the circular coil such that it has two ends now if we rotate this coil about suppose this axis if this coil is now being rotated about this axis like this then the number of magnetic field lines or we can say the magnetic flux the value of magnetic flux will change with time through this coil right because when it is it is rotating like this the area vector is also rotating with it if the area vector is is like this right so when this coil is rotating the area vector is also rotating with it so the direction of area vector is changing and the direction of magnetic field remains fixed which is into the plane so when this coil is rotating the angle between the area vector and magnetic field is changing due to which the flux linked with this coil will change with time and this law says that whenever the magnetic flux changes with time an emf is induced between the two ends of the conductor so then 
an emf will be induced between these two ends which means that one of these two ends will become positively charged and other other one will, will become negatively charged so this is what the first law is saying now if you connect these two ends with a conductor or something this is a conducting wire so a current will flow through that conductor and this conductor this yellow conductor behaves as a battery having two ends positive and negative so the direction of current through this conducting wire will be like this now if we stop rotating this coil then the magnetic flux through the coil will stop changing and due to that there will be no induced emf across these two ends and the current through this coil will stop so this is what the first law is saying so we can change the flux either by changing the angle or by changing the value of area or by changing the magnitude of magnetic field now let's take one more case suppose this coil you just have to imagine this this coil is doing something like this the area of this coil is increasing then it is decreasing then increasing then it is decreasing even then a current will be induced in this wire or emf will be induced across its two ends because when the area is increasing then the flux through it is also changing that is the flux is increasing and when the area is decreasing the flux is also decreasing so there will be an induced emf because this law says that whenever the magnetic flux changes it is not saying the magnetic flux should change due to this or that whenever the magnetic flux is changing due to any reason the emf is going to be induced across the two ends of the conductor and a current will be induced in the loop right <coughs> so we can take one more example now now we have taken two examples in first example theta was changing in second example a was changing now let's take a third example in which suppose we change the magnitude of this magnetic field everything remains stationary there is no change in area coil is also not rotating but let us change the magnitude of this magnetic field by some means we are changing the magnitude of this field even then the emf will induce across the two ends of this conductor and current will induce in the loop right so in either way in any of the ways if the flux is changing through the coil then the emf is going to be induced across the two ends of the coil okay so this was this is the first law of faraday which is called the first law of faraday <laughs> electromagnetic induction now let us discuss the second law first law gives an idea about the situation the condition which is required to induce emf and current in a coil and second law gives a formula for the magnitude of induced emf and induced current second law says second law says <coughs> just wait a sec okay second law says the magnitude of induced emf is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux the magnitude of induced emf is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux what is the meaning of this law it says that if the magnetic flux through the coil is changing more rapidly then the value of emf which is induced will be more and the hence the value of current will be more and if the magnetic flux is changing less rapidly then the value of magnetic uh, then the value of induced emf you know about the induced emf you know the meaning of induced emf induced emf is simply means the potential difference emf is nothing but potential difference full form of emf is electromotive force it is nothing but the potential difference between the two ends of a conductor so if if the flux is changing more rapidly then the value of emf or potential difference across the two ends will be more and if the flux is changing less rapidly then the value of emf and current will be less for example if this coil is rotating slowly if this coil is rotating slowly then flux is going to change very slowly right and in that case the magnitude of induced emf will be less and hence the current through the coil will also be less 
current will also flow this part of the loop right it, it is going like this then it will go in this direction and like this right you can take any shape this is just an example and if this coil is rotating more rapidly then the magnetic flux will be changing more rapidly and due to which the emf which is induced will be more and the current will be more and if not it, it is not uh, applicable only to the rotation but uh, uh, whatever way you are changing the flux through the coil right if if this area is increasing and decreasing so if it is increasing slowly and then decreasing slowly then the flux will change slowly and the induced emf will be less but if the area is increasing rapidly and decreasing rapidly then the flux which is passing through the coil will change rapidly and due to that more current and more emf will be induced in the coil so we can simply say that the magnitude of induced emf e is simply final flux linked with the coil minus initial flux linked with the coil divided by time so this will give you the rate of change of magnetic flux that is change in flux divided by t you just have to multiply this with n where n is number of number of turns number of turns in the coil number of turns in the coil right okay so in books you will see a negative sign in front of this formula so we are going to put this negative sign in front of this formula but why a negative sign is present this is this is a detailed discussion so we are going to discuss this thing in the next part of this topic which is lens law so for this lecture let us take the magnitude of the induced emf which is simply n delta phi that means phi initial phi final minus phi initial that is change in flux or we will write it delta phi b to distinguish it from electric flux divided by delta t right in in time delta t flux the change in flux is delta phi b right this is this is going to give you the value of average emf which is induced in the coil now average emf because suppose you have taken time as 5 seconds and in that entire 5 seconds change in flux is delta phi b so it can it is it is quite possible that in first second the value of change in flux was something else and in second second it was something else in third second it was something else so we are not going into the instantaneous details we are just taking the average change in flux for first five seconds so or or five seconds so this is going to be the average emf induced in the coil in five seconds so if you want to find the value of instantaneous emf in instantaneous emf then instantaneous emf is simply n d phi by dt right so you have to take the derivative of flux function which is given in questions as a function of time in most of the numerical that, that you are going to find on second law you will see that uh, number of there is no mention of number of turns so in that case you are going to take number of turns as 1 now what is the value of induced current so induced current is simply e by r where r is the resistance of the coil and this formula comes directly from ohm's law right this is ohm's law so induced current we, we, are, we, we will be calculating induced current using this formula. Now, let us take one example. Now, it is given that a circular coil of radius 7 cm. So, radius of the circular coil is given as 7 cm. Now, let us convert this into meter by dividing it by 100. Now this is what this is this is emf that means potential difference so this is going to come out in volts and this is current this will be in amperes 
सो आर इज सेवन सेंटीमीटर अ सर्कुलर कॉइल ऑफ रेडियस सेवन सेंटीमीटर इज रोटेटिंग इन अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ऑफ ट्वेंटी टेस्ला सो मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज ट्वेंटी टेस्ला सच दैट एंगल बिटवीन द एरिया वैक्टर एंड मैग्नेटिक फील्ड चेंजेस फ्रॉम कॉइल इज रोटेटिंग सच दैट द एंगल बिटवीन एरिया वैक्टर एंड मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज चेंजिंग फ्रॉम थर्टी डिग्री टू सिक्सटी डिग्री इन जीरो पॉइंट वन सेकेंड इन जीरो पॉइंट वन सेकेंड फाइंड द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ इंड्यूस डी एम एफ एंड इंड्यूस्ड करंट इफ द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द कॉयल इज हंड्रेड ओम इफ द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द कॉयल इज हंड्रेड ओम नाउ नाउ लेट एस अप्लाई द फॉर्मूला वट इज द फॉर्मूला फॉर्मूला इज माइनस एन फाइ फाइनल माइनस फाइ इनिशियल डिवाइडेड बाय टी सिंस देर इज नो मैंशन of number of turns so we are going to take number of turns as 1 now the final flux is ba cos theta 2 and the initial flux is ba cos theta 1 because neither b nor a are changing only the angle is changing right so b and a are constant in both the cases so if we take b and a common we are left with cos theta 2 माइनस कॉस थीटा वन डिवाइडेड बाय टी नाउ लेट्स पुट ऑल द वैल्यूज सो ई इज व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इट इज ट्वेंटी सिंस इट इज अ सर्कुलर कॉइल सो एरिया इज गोइंग टू कम लाइक दिस पाईआर स्क्वायर कॉस थीटा टू थीटा टू इज सिक्सटी डिग्री सो कॉस सिक्सटी माइनस इनिशियल एंगल इज थर्टी डिग्री माइनस कॉस थर्टी डिवाइडेड बाय टाइम विच इज जीरो पॉइंट वन सो ई इज नाउ लेट्स कैंसिल थिंग्स दिस वन सेवन गेट्स कैंसिल्ड विद दिस एंड दिस जीरो पॉइंट वन इज गोइंग टू कम इन न्यूमिरेटर एंड इट बिकम्स टेन सो व्हेन वी मल्टीप्लाई इट विथ ट्वेंटी दिस ट्वेंटी बिकम्स टू हंड्रेड इन टू ट्वेंटी टू इन टू सेवन Divided by square of hundred because seven cut na square ten ka square to nahi cut so ten raised to power four cos sixty is one by two and cos thirty is root three divided by two so EMF is okay now we can cancel things. Minus two into twenty two into seven. LCM is two one minus one point seven three, which is the value of root two. Okay, now two gets cancelled out, and. Now it is minus twenty two into seven is one fifty four into minus zero point seven three. So the answer is one fifty four into this. One one two point four two. Putting the decimal on correct places, we get one one two point four volt. Right. So this is the value of induced EMF. We are supposed to find the current also. The resistance of the coil is hundred ohm. So what is the value of induced current? I is E by R. So E is One one two point four divided by hundred, so it is one point one two four ampere. So induced current is one point one two four ampere. So this was the whole concept of Faraday's laws, formulae, meaning, and numericals. I'll meet you in the next lecture. Till then, all the very best.